Hello, and welcome to the 2500 series video. I'm Jordan Rudis. The purpose of this video is to give you a basic overview of your new instrument and get you up and running quickly. We'll cover some basic programming tips, create a sequence, and look at all the major operational areas. This video is not intended to be a substitute for your manual. In fact, you may find it helpful to pause this video and refer to your manual as you watch. You'll also find it helpful to watch the video while you're sitting next to your 2500, so you can follow along on your own instrument. This video has been broken up into sections. To help you find these various sections, a number will be displayed in the upper left-hand corner so you can fast forward to the areas that most interest you. These numbers correspond with the chapter titles printed on the video box. Don't be afraid to push any buttons on the instrument. You can't break anything. Let's get started. First, we'll give you a quick overview of the instrument. Looking at the front panel, you'll notice that it's divided into sections. On the left and along the bottom is a row of eight buttons. Pressing these buttons takes you to the 2500's eight operational modes. The names of the modes are printed in white under the display. Underneath this, you'll notice that the buttons also have a green label, and some of the buttons have a yellow label. While you're editing a program and are in the program editor, then the green labels apply to these buttons. We'll be showing some examples of this later. When you're editing a sample within the sample editor, the yellow labels apply. Above these buttons is another row of eight buttons. The edit and exit buttons are used to enter and exit the various editors found in the different modes. The middle six buttons are called soft buttons because their function changes according to where you are in the software menus. You will notice six blocks at the bottom of the display. The blocks change names in relation to the function displayed on the screen. For instance, when you first turn on the 2500, you're in the program mode and the soft buttons are used to transpose by octave, change MIDI channels, and change the way programs are displayed, or send a MIDI all notes off message. If you have a rack version of the 2500 and just tried pressing these buttons, you may have noticed that pressing the octave plus and minus buttons had no effect. Don't worry, this is normal. We'll explain about this in just a moment. To the left of the display are the channel bank buttons. These buttons also have different functions depending on which mode you're in. In program and several other modes, they will switch you through the 16 MIDI channels. In quick access mode, they switch to the different quick access banks. In the song mode, they switch record tracks. And if you're editing programs or setups, then the green label under the button applies, switching you through layers in a program or zones in a setup. To the right of the display are buttons used for navigating and data entry. The four arrow buttons move the cursor around in the various edit screens and also scroll through programs and setups when in those modes. The wheel and the plus and minus buttons are used to scroll through the values of the various parameters, and the numeric keypad is used to directly enter specific values. Finally, we come to the sample input section. If you don't have the sampling option, there will be a blank panel instead of jacks. We will not be covering sampling in this video, so refer to the chapter on sampling in your manual for information on this. On the back panel, you'll find the typical power, MIDI, SCSI, and audio connections, along with the KDS port, which is used to connect the optional DMT interface using Kurzweil's proprietary digital format. If you have the sampling option, you will also see digital input and output connectors. Let's take a moment to talk about the audio outs. You'll see there are 10 configured as pairs labeled mix, A, B, C, and D. It's important to understand that even though there are 10 jacks, there are only eight routable outs. Here's the way it works. When you route a signal, you choose the A, B, C, or D pairs and the appropriate panning position. But all audio signals come out of the mix pair until you physically plug a cable into a separate out. At that point, any signal routed to that out is removed from the mix and comes out of that particular output. So if you plug cables into all of the separate outs, there will be no signal coming from the mix outs. To route something through the standard effects processor in your 2500, you need to set the output to A. But the effects actually only come out of the mix outs. So if you plug cables into the A outs, then you will not be able to use the effects. 
For this reason, a typical way that the users would wire their units is to plug into the mix B, C, and D pair. We should mention that this method of using the effects applies only to the standard effects processor. If you add the KD effects option, you can route effects to any output. The separate outs can also be used as insert points for external instruments or to route a 2500 signal to an external effects processor and back into the instrument. For more on this, please consult your manual. When you first turn your unit on, you may want to change the display contrast. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to hold down the enter button. While holding it down, move the wheel. This method is temporary. Your 2500 will revert to its previous setting the next time you power up. The second method is to go to the master mode and use the cursor buttons to bring you to where it says contrast and move the wheel once again. As you scroll it, you'll see the contrast changing. Now let's jump in and start playing. We'll assume you know how to hook up MIDI and audio. If you aren't in program mode, go there by pressing the program button. If you have a rack, make sure your keyboard is transmitting on channel 1. Then check the upper right-hand corner of the 2500's display to see that it's on channel 1. If not, you can change it using the channel bank buttons or the channel soft buttons. To scroll through different programs, you can use the wheel, the arrow buttons, or the plus and minus soft buttons. You can also call up a specific program by typing its number and pressing enter. Take some time to explore the preset programs, making sure to use the mod wheel and other control sources. For those of you who have a rack, if your keyboard has a data slider, make sure it is set to controller number 6 and explore what happens to the sound when you move it. On most of the preset programs, moving the mod wheel and data slider and using aftertouch will change the sound in subtle or dramatic ways, giving you some idea of the power of vast synthesis. A complete list of the preset programs and how control sources affect them is printed in the reference section of the manual. You can use the View Soft button to switch the display between a big view and a regular view. Jordan has already showed you you can turn the wheel or enter a number specifically, but you may want to just go bank by bank, and the quick way to do that is to press the increment decrement buttons right under the alpha wheel, like so. By pressing the increment and decrement button simultaneously, we'll advance by 100. Right now we're in program mode, so we go from program 1 to program 100. Another press of both of these buttons takes us to 200, the first user created program. Again, by double pressing these buttons, you'll cycle through any banks that have programs in them. This also works for setup mode. If I were to select setups, I can also scroll by increments of 100 just by pressing the increment decrement button simultaneously. The 2500 is 16 part multi timbral. That means you can have a different program on each channel. You can see what program is on each channel by using the channel bank buttons or the channel soft buttons. You can easily call up a specific program for a MIDI channel by going to that channel and picking a program that you want. If you have the rack, keep in mind that you may be looking at channel 2. But if you are sending from your keyboard on channel 1, you will still hear the program that is on channel 1. As you scroll through different programs on various MIDI channels, you may occasionally see a program that is in parenthesis, and that will not make any sound. This is because you have selected what Kurzweil calls a drum program. Normal programs in the 2500 can contain up to three layers, but you can actually have programs with as many as 32 layers. Programs that are more than three layers are called drum programs. In fact, they do not have to have drum sounds assigned to them. They can have any sound. But we use the name drum program because we feel it's the most likely use for a program with 32 layers. The only limitation for a drum program is that it must be played in a MIDI channel which has been designated as a drum channel. A drum channel can play any program. It does not have to play a drum program, but a drum program must be played in a drum channel. 
you can have up to eight drum channels on the 2500. Under default conditions, channels 1 through 8 are drum channels, but you can change this to be channels 1 through 7, plus the channel of your choice. To set that channel, go to the master page. You will see a parameter marked drum channel. Set this to any value between 9 and 16. There are many ways to use your 2500 in live performance mode, and thanks to the very handy buttons on the front panel, you can do an awful lot. I'm going to use the MIDI channel buttons to scroll through a variety of programs on different MIDI channels and layer them in real time, and also use the octave shift keys to allow me to do some fancy arpeggios very quickly, playing in the same range of the keyboard. <laughs> switching to MIDI channel 1 and using a piano, changing its octave, and to zero back to normal tuning, I just press both octave keys. Changing to MIDI channel 2 for more orchestra. Changing to MIDI channel 3 for some wind. Pressing both channel buttons to return back to MIDI channel 1 to play piano again. Changing my octave. And zeroing back to normal tuning. So these are some very simple uses of the front panel buttons that allow a lot of creativity to happen on the fly. Let's create a simple program. Go back to the program mode and call up program 199, the default program. Press edit to enter the program editor. Whenever you enter the program editor, you start out on the algorithm page. We'll talk more about the algorithms later. Notice that the two outside soft buttons say more. This is because there are many different pages in the program editor. By using the More buttons, you can cycle through different groups of soft buttons. For now, we'll stay with the first group of soft buttons and press Key Map. On this page, you'll select the Key Map, which will be the basic sound for this layer. Select Key Map number four, the Soft Electric Piano. So far, we have a one-layer program. Notice that the display says Layer 1 of 1 in the upper right-hand corner. Let's create a second layer. Press the left more button once. Now press the soft button that says new layer. The 2500 creates a second layer set to the same key map as layer one. Notice that the display now says two of two in the upper right hand corner. Let's change the key map for layer two to number three, hard electric piano. Now if you play, You'll hear both samples together. To switch between layers, use the channel bank buttons to the left of the display. You can mute individual layers while you're editing. Notice that the program, setup, and quick access buttons are marked mute 1, 2, and 3 in green. Pressing any one of these will mute that layer. In the case of programs which are more than three layers, then the mute one button will solo the currently displayed layer, and the mute two or three buttons will mute the currently displayed layer. Now press the right more button, and then press the layer soft button. This page contains some basic parameters that affect how the layer works. We are going to set things so that the program switches between the two layers with velocity. If you are not already on layer one, switch it there with the channel bank button. 
The low velocity parameter is already set to triple P. Use the down arrow button to move the cursor to high velocity and change the value to MF. Now switch to the second layer. Leave the high velocity on, on triple forte and change the low velocity to F. Now by striking a key with different amounts of velocity, you can switch between the two layers. Notice that there are also other parameters for note range on this page. You can use these to create split programs by limiting the note range for each layer. There are many other things we could change, but we'll have to save that for the advanced programming section. For now, let's talk about naming and saving your program. Press the left more button twice, then press name. You see the name of the original program, default program. Let's name our program ePiano. The numeric keypad is used for naming. Each number has letters printed in green underneath the button. Each time you press the button, it cycles through those letters. Use the plus minus button to change from upper to lower case. The left and right arrow buttons, along with the two arrow soft buttons, are used to move the cursor across the screen. You can use the delete buttons to erase characters, and insert will insert a space. Once you have named the program, press OK. Now press Save. The 2500 will choose the first blank number to save into. You can actually choose any number you want to save into. If a program already exists in the number you choose, the display changes to show the program in that location and asks you if you want to replace it. For now, let's just save it to a blank location. You have just created your first program. Press exit to leave the program editor. Since you can have up to 1,000 programs in memory, or for that matter, setups, a very handy feature is included called Search String, which allows you to look up any of the programs or any of the setups just simply by pressing the Enter button and one of the 10 numeric keypad buttons. I can then type in a series of letters. In this case, I've typed in the word Rock. When I say OK, it will find only those programs using the word Rock. So now I can hold enter and either hit the increment or decrement button and that will scroll forwards or backwards through only those objects with the word rock in it. So I'll scroll just a few times and the program I was looking for is right here, Rock Band. Now let's take a look at setup mode. Setup mode allows you to take up to three programs on three different MIDI channels and split or layer them in zones across the keyboard. If you go to setup mode, you will notice that you can have up to three different programs. Each zone will be on a different MIDI channel. Lines under the program name show where each zone is laid out on the keyboard. Before we proceed any further, we need to talk about one parameter which will be important if you have the rack module. It's called the Local Keyboard Channel, and it is found on the MIDI Receive page. To get to it, press the MIDI Mode button, then the Soft button labeled Receive. You will need to use this parameter if you want to use Setup Mode. It's important to understand that a setup is a control-oriented function. On the keyboard version of the 2500, the keyboard itself will transmit on up to three channels when in Setup Mode. But with the rack, if your keyboard only sends information on one MIDI channel, you need a way to turn that information on one MIDI channel into three channels. This is what the local keyboard channel parameter does. It takes the signal coming in one channel and turns it into different information depending on where you are in the 2500. 
To demonstrate, set local keyboard channel to 1 and then send from your keyboard on channel 1. Now go back to setup mode and notice that although all the zones within your setups are on different MIDI channels, they all respond to information coming in on one channel. It is important to understand that local keyboard channel will change the way the 2500 performs in other modes as well. It changes the incoming information depending on what you have displayed in the 2500. For instance, if you are in program mode with channel 5 in the display, then the information coming in on channel 1 will be turned into channel 5 and you will hear the program assigned to channel 5. But if you turn local keyboard channel off by setting it to none, then if you send on channel 1, you will hear the program that is assigned to channel 1 even if you are looking at channel 5. Local keyboard does more than just change the MIDI channel. You will notice that the octave plus and minus soft buttons now will transpose the information. And you can even use it to change one type of MIDI controller to another. For more information on this, please consult your manual. Now let's go back to setup mode. Take some time to play the preset setups. Once again, make sure to try using the mod wheel and other controllers to see how they affect the sound. Let's make our own setup. It's easy to do. As we mentioned before, a setup can have up to three zones. We're going to make a setup with two programs layered on the right side of the keyboard and another program on the left side. Go to Setup 100, the basic setup. Now press Edit. I'm going to be using some programs that I've loaded in. You can use any program you'd like. I'm using ePiano for the first zone. Notice it's assigned to channel 1. The most important thing to remember about setups is that each zone must be on a separate channel because you can only have one program on a channel at a time. The exception to this would be if you wanted the same program in more than one zone. For example, you could take a program and assign it to two zones, but then transpose one zone an octave up, allowing you to play two octaves of the same sound. But more often than not, you'll be using different programs for each zone. Now we're going to limit this zone to the top half of the keyboard. You can set the low note and high note individually by changing the parameters on the page. But the easy way is to press the soft button that says set range, then just strike the two notes on your keyboard. Now go to the second zone by pressing the channel bank up button. Notice the display says Zone 2 in the upper right-hand corner and that the channel is now set to 2. For this zone, I'm selecting Meditation Pad. Set it to the same key range as Zone 1. Let's transpose this program down an octave. Move the cursor down to the transpose parameter and set it to minus 12 semitones. Let's make this program a little softer than the first one. The parameter marked V in the bottom right-hand corner lets you set an initial volume for a zone. It does this by sending MIDI volume control on that channel. Let's set it to 95 for this zone. Finally, go to zone 3. Move the cursor back to program. For this zone, I'm selecting Warm Bass. Now assign this to the lower half of the keyboard. Just like in the program editor, you can use the three mute buttons to temporarily mute a zone while you are in the editor. The last step is to pick an effect for our setup. We'll choose Medium Hall. If you want, you can adjust the wet-dry mix. Remember that the effect in the wet-dry mix will be the same for all the zones. If you want, you can name and save your setup. The procedure is the same as with a program. 
Like programs, there are a thousand locations for setups. Now we'll take a look at quick access mode. This mode was designed especially for performance purposes, but it can also be useful in the studio. When you go to quick access mode, you will notice a list of 10 names. These can either be names of programs or setups. Notice that they are laid out in the same way the numeric keypad is laid out. By pressing a button on the numeric keypad, you can call up the program or setup that relates to that button. So you have immediate access to any programs or setups with only one button press. This group of 10 is called a quick access bank. You can have up to 255 banks. The name and number of the bank is on the top line. You can use the channel bank buttons to move through the different banks. You can also go directly to a bank by pressing either the plus, minus, or the clear button on the numeric keypad. You can then type in the bank number and hit OK or Enter. If you look through the preset banks, you will see that we have organized them by groups. This is a useful way to use the banks. You can put similar programs in a bank and then quickly audition them to find the one you want. Creating your own bank is simple. Press Edit. The first parameter you see is Entry. This is the number on the numeric keypad that you will assign the program or setup to. You can scroll through each entry with the channel bank buttons. The next parameter lets you select a program or setup. Scroll once to the left and we'll choose Setup. Scroll back to the right, and you can choose which setup you want for this entry. That's all there is to it. As you can see, there are soft buttons for naming and saving the bank. The procedure is the same as before. Now that we have played some programs and setups, let's take a step back for a moment and look at how the various parts of the 2500 are related. In Kurzweil's terminology, everything that can be named and saved is called an object. We already have seen that a setup is made of one or more programs. But what about other objects? Let's look at the hierarchy of all the objects. The basic unit of a sound is a sample. This can be one of the samples or waveforms in ROM or a ROM sample you have edited, or a sample you have created yourself or loaded into sample RAM. The K2000 treats ROM and RAM samples the same way. The next level is the key map. A key map is a group of one or more samples assigned across the keyboard, with each sample assigned to a range of keys. The key map then becomes the basis for a layer in a program. All of the programming parameters in a layer will be applied to all of the samples in the key map. Next, we have setups and quick access banks, which we have already shown. Finally, there are several different master objects, such as velocity and pressure maps, intonation tables, and others. These master objects are so called because they apply to the entire machine. All objects have a name and a number. When you start saving your own objects, the 2500 picks the first available number. Different types of objects can have the same number. For instance, you can have a sample 200, key map 200, and program 200. Since the objects are different types, the 2500 can tell them apart. We have already seen how to put programs into setups and quick access banks. Let's look at how to use samples and key maps to create a program. Start in program mode and call up program 199, which is the default program. 
Press Edit to go into the Program Editor, then select the Key Map Soft button. As we did before, we'll call up a new key map. Select 168, which is Silence. Now press Edit again. This takes you into the Key Map Editor, which is the page where you can assign different samples to ranges on the keyboard. Notice that a sample called Silence is assigned across the entire range of the keyboard. Assigning a new sample is quite easy. Press the Assign button. The 2500 asks you to select a sample. We'll choose number 40, the ride bell. Press OK. Now the 2500 asks you to, to strike a low key and then a high key. Let's choose C4 for the low and G4 for the high. The display will return to the key map edit page, showing our sample assigned to the keys we struck. Let's do one more. Press assign again. This time, choose sample number 75, the conga tone. Assign it from C3 to G3. If you play across the keyboard, you will hear the two samples playing in their note ranges. Now let's examine our key map. The screen only shows you one range at a time, but by scrolling through the key range parameter, we can see that we now have silence assigned from C2 to B2. We have sample number 75 from C3 to G3, and then silence again from G sharp 3 to B3, and then the ride symbol number 40 from C4 to G4, and then silence again from G sharp 4 to G10. An important thing to understand about a key map is that it, it's like a string with different beads on it. For a regular key map, you cannot have more than one sample assigned to a note. And you can't have nothing assigned to a note or group of notes. There will always be a sample assigned, even if it is silence. The only situation where you can have more than one sample assigned to a note is in the case of velocity switching key maps. Please refer to your manual for more on this. As you have noticed, the sample transposes as you play it up and down the keyboard. In fact, the sample is transposed according to where its root key is defined. We put the root key in the name of all our samples to make it easier when you construct a key map. Now let's go back to the key range for sample 75. As you can see, the sample root is C4 but we have assigned it from C3 to G3. So we are hearing the sample transposed down an octave when we strike the C. We can change it so the sample plays at its original pitch by using the course tune parameter to transpose the sample back up. By setting course tune to 12 semitones, we can transpose the sample back up an octave so that the original pitch now plays at C3. You can use the fine-tune parameter for subtle tuning changes. Now let's look at the other parameters on the page. The new range soft button allows you to quickly change the range of keys assigned to the currently displayed sample. The volume adjust parameter allows you to even out the volumes of various samples in the key map without having to go into the sample editor and change the actual sample. And master transpose will transpose the entire key map up or down the keyboard. Although it is beyond the scope of this video to cover sampling, we're going to take a brief detour and show you the sample editor. If you press edit while in the key map editor, you will jump into the sample editor. This is where you can change the start, end, and loop points of a sample and make other modifications. The sample you will be editing was the one that was currently displayed in the key map editor. If you press the miscellaneous soft button, you will see the root key number, which we have just been referring to. Press exit to leave the sample editor, and you are back on the key map editor page. One more thing before we finish here. While you are on this page, if you press the MIDI mode button, the 2500 will jump to the sampling page. That's where you'll do all your own sampling. 
You can also get to the sampling page from the master mode page, but this is a very useful way to get to sampling. By starting on the default program with silence as the key map, you can jump into the sampler, create the samples you need, then when you press exit, you're back in the key map editor, ready to assign your new samples across the keyboard. Now that we've created a key map, you can name it and save it. Remember that since you started with silence, this new key map has that name. If you don't rename it, you can get confused with lots of key maps all named silence. Once you've saved, if you press exit, you're back on the key map page in the program editor, and your new key map has been selected. You're ready to create a program with it. Now let's delve into the heart of the K2500 variable architecture synthesis. VAST gives you an outstanding array of tools with which you can modify and control your sounds. We'll try and give you some ideas of the possibilities. Once you understand the basics, we encourage you to experiment and create your own sounds. First, we need to talk about VAST algorithms. This is the heart of VAST. An algorithm is very simply a signal processing path. It controls how your audio signal is routed. When you first press edit in the program mode, you'll find yourself on the algorithm page. If you highlight the algorithm parameter and scroll through the different algorithms, you will notice that they consist of between three and five boxes. Each of these boxes is some kind of processing function, whether it is a filter, amplification, or some other type of function. Notice that with the exception of the last couple of algorithms, the first box is always labeled pitch. The last one is always labeled amp, although there are sometimes different amp variations. But depending on the algorithm you choose, you will have a choice of different DSP functions. If you look in the reference section in the manual, you will see diagrams for each algorithm along with all possible DSPs for each algorithm. You will also notice that there are five arrows above the boxes. Each arrow corresponds to a control page in the program editor, allowing you many real-time and fixed controls over each particular function. Since the first box is always labeled pitch, the control page soft button is also labeled pitch, which you will see as soon as you go into the program editor. If you press the Write More button, you will see four soft buttons labeled F1 through F4. Each soft button also contains an abbreviated name for the particular DSP. Since these can change depending on which algorithm and which DSP functions you pick, the labels on the soft buttons will change as well. Press the F1 button. You are now looking at the control page for the first DSP function after the initial pitch function. All of the control pages look nearly identical. What you are controlling changes with the DSP that you pick. But the methods of controlling them are basically all the same. So once you get used to looking at this page, you can apply your knowledge to all of the control pages. On the left side, you will see parameters for coarse and fine adjustments. If you were looking at a filter page, these would represent a cutoff frequency. If you were looking at an amp page, you would be looking at an amount of dB. Kurzweil uses real measurements for all of the DSPs, not some arbitrary number between 1 and 127. On the left side, you will also see parameters for velocity tracking and key tracking. On the right side, you'll see parameters for setting control sources, such as LFO or envelope, or for using a physical controller, such as a mod wheel or pedal. On the 2500, just about anything can be used to control anything else. It is by using these control capabilities that you can breathe life into your sounds. Press exit, and then no if it asks you if you want to save. Now that we have given you a general overview of VAST, let's get into programming a patch so you can see how to put these concepts into action. Call up program 199, the default program, and press edit. Now press the key map soft button and change the key map to number 151. This is the sawtooth waveform.
Now press the algorithm soft button and the cursor up button. Change the algorithm to number 9. Now cursor back down and set the second box to saw plus. Cursor to the next box and set it also to saw plus. Finally, cursor to the next box and set that to LP2 res. What we have done is created an algorithm where we start with an initial sawtooth waveform and add two more sawtooth waveforms, then pass them through a two-pole low-pass filter with built-in resonance. What's really great is that the two additional waveforms are created by vast DSPs, so they don't take up any additional voices of polyphony. This means that we have three oscillators playing, but we're only using one voice of polyphony. When you first select the filter DSP, it defaults to a fairly low cutoff so that we can more clearly hear the changes we'll be making. We are going to temporarily raise the cutoff. While the filter DSP is still highlighted, press edit. This will jump you directly to the control page for the filter. Using the data wheel, set the course parameter to C8, which is 4186 hertz. If you play the keyboard now, you'll notice that it sounds like part of the sound changes pitch with the keys, but the other parts stay in the same pitch. This is because the two sawtooth waveform DSPs are not set to have any key tracking. Let's fix this. Press the right more button so that you see the F1 through F4 soft buttons. Notice that both F1 and F2 have pitch on the buttons. This is short for pitch and indicates that the control pages will be controlling pitch of these oscill oscillators. Press F1, scroll down, and set key tracking to 100 cents per key. Press the F2 button and do the same thing. Now if you play your keyboard, you'll hear everything changing pitch as you play up and down. Next, we'll detune the oscillators to give the program a fatter, more analog sound. Go back to the F1 page and change the fine parameter to negative 7 cents. You can use the plus minus button on the keypad to enter negative numbers. Since there are 100 cents per semitone, this is only a small amount of detuning. Now go to the F2 page and set the fine to 3 cents. We will also drop this oscillator down an octave by setting the course parameter to negative 12 semitones. Next, we're going to set the mod wheel to open and close the filter, controlling the brightness of the sound. We'll go back to the filter page, this time by pressing F3. Notice that it's labeled frequency, showing you're on the controlling the cutoff frequency of the filter. Set the course parameter to C4, which is 262 hertz. This closes the filter down so the sound is almost muffled. Now, we'll assign the mod wheel to control the filter. Scroll over to the source 1 parameter. We offer an extremely wide range of control sources, and it can take a while to scroll through them. So Kurzweil gives you an easy way to call up a control source called intuitive entry. Press and hold the enter button, then move the mod wheel on your keyboard. If the mod wheel on your keyboard is set to send MIDI controller 1, then the display should change to M wheel. Next, set the depth parameter to 6,500 cents. Now, if you strike a note and move the mod wheel, you'll hear the filter open and close.
You'll also hear that characteristic wow that comes with using resonance on a filter, because the filter we have chosen has resonance automatically added. Next, we'll use an LFO to control pitch, which will give us vibrato. Plus the left more button and select the pitch soft button. Scroll to source 2. We are going to assign this to LFO. Here's an editing shortcut that works like intuitive entry. Hold enter and strike B5, which is the second B above middle C. The display will change to LFO1. Each of the internal control sources is assigned to a key. If you have certain control sources you use over and over again, you can quickly call them up by memorizing which key they're assigned to. Next, we'll set the speed of the LFO. Press the right more button till you see the LFO soft button and select it. Set the minimum rate for LFO1 to 5.50 Hz. Leave the rest of the parameters as they are. Now here's another shortcut. We need to go back to the pitch page. Instead of using the more buttons to get back, press the MIDI mode button, which is also marked previous page in green. The 2500 jumps right back to the pitch page. Now we'll control the amount of vibrato with aftertouch. Highlight the depth parameter. Hold enter and press D2, which is the second D below middle C. This selects mono pressure. If your keyboard has poly pressure and you want to use it, hold enter and press B4. If your keyboard doesn't have pressure at all, you might want to use the mod wheel. Finally, set the maximum depth to 30 cents. Now when you play, the harder you press, the more vibrato is added. Next, we're going to program an amplitude envelope to control the shape of the sound. Scroll with the more buttons till you see amp envelope and select it. The screen comes up with the default natural envelope setting. There's an envelope for each sampled instrument that is already programmed to follow the natural contour of that instrument. But if you switch the parameter to user, you can create your own envelope. The screen changes to give you access to the seven envelope stages and a graphic representation of the envelope. There are two parts to the graphic. The first represents what happens when you press down a key. The second is what happens when you let go of the key. For those of you who are used to a typical ADSR, the 2500 envelope may look a little different, but it really is quite easy to work with. For each stage in an envelope, there are two parameters. The first is how much time it takes to go through that stage. The second is how much amplitude you will have at the end of the stage. When a key is struck, the 2500 will pass through the three attack stages and end at the decay stage. When you let go of the key, it will immediately jump to the first release stage and go right on through to the last release stage. Although there is no sustain parameter, you can obtain sustain by setting the decay amount higher than 0%. When you first choose a user envelope, the default settings sound like this. We'll change it to the following amounts. We'll leave the first attack stage at its defaults, but set the attack 2 time to 0.20 and the amount to 50%. Next, we'll set the decay stage to one second and the amount to 43%. Finally, let's set the release one time to two seconds and the amount to zero.
Notice that there are soft buttons marked envelope 2 and envelope 3. Though the amplitude envelope will always control amplitude, these two envelopes can be routed to anything, such as opening and closing a filter or controlling an LFO. In addition, you will also find a page with settings for two ASRs, which are simplified envelopes that can also be used to control anything you want. Now we'll add another layer to our program to create an even bigger sound. Press either of the more buttons until you get to, this, to the set of soft buttons that start with new layer. This set of buttons lets you add and delete layers to your program. When adding, you can add a default layer, duplicate the current layer, or even import a layer from another program. Let's duplicate this layer by pressing the Dupe Layer button. Notice the display now shows we are on layer 2 of 2. With two layers, our patch is starting to get too loud. So we'll bring down the volume of both layers. Scroll and select the F4 amplitude page. We will set the adjust parameter for each layer to 2 decibels. Remember that when you switch from layer to layer using the layer zone buttons to the left of the display, and that you can listen to the individual layers by using the mute buttons. Now scroll and select the layer button. We are going to add some delay to layer 2 so that it starts a little after the first layer. Set the delay, the delay control parameter to on. Then set the maximum delay to 40 milliseconds. Next, we will set the outputs for each layer. Press the Write More button till you see Output and press that button. This page allows you to choose the output pair and panning for each layer. If you wanted to use a single out, you would choose a particular pair, then pan it hard left or hard right. We will leave both layers set to the AFX output pair. Remember that everything comes out of the mix outs unless you plug a cable into the separate out. Another thing to understand is that to route a sound through the effects processor, you must assign it to the A pair. But the effects only come out of the mix outs. The actual A separate outs are dry. So to use the internal effects, make sure you route the layer to A and then have cables plugged into the mix outs and not the A separate outs. The panning is determined by the pan and the mode parameters. The mode parameter has several values. The default is plus MIDI. This setting takes the initial setting of the pan parameter and will change if you send MIDI controller 10, the pan control. If it is set to fixed, it will stay at the settings you set for the pan parameter and will ignore controller 10. Auto and reverse will determine the pan position based on the key range. In other words, as you play across the keyboard, the pan position will move. Auto moves left to right as you go up the keyboard. Reverse is good for a string section, mimicking the way a string section sets up, with the basses on the left and the violins at the right. Let's set layer 2, which we're currently on, hard right, and layer 1, hard left. Remember, you switch layers using the layer zone buttons to the left of the display. We'll leave the mode on plus MIDI for both layers. Now let's add an effect to our patch. Press the effect soft button, then choose effect number one. So, now set a wet dry mix of 35%. This will be an initial level. We are going to program a controller to change this in real time. If your keyboard has a data slider, use that. If it doesn't, you could try another controller, such as a continuous pedal or even the mod wheel. Scroll over to the source parameter. Once again, you can use intuitive entry. Just hold the enter button and move your controller.
then set the depth to 30 percent. While you're editing, if you want to listen to your sound without effects, you can press the effects button and the signal will temporarily bypass the effects processor. Just press effects again to add the effects back in. Although our sound is complete at this point, we'll add one more thing to demonstrate some more features. Press either of the more buttons till you see the import layer soft button and press it. From this page, you can import any layer from any other program. While on this page, you will hear the layer you have selected along with the layers you already have in your program. Press the mute one and mute two buttons to hear only the layer that you are importing. You can scroll through various programs. Then when you find the program you want, use the layer zone buttons to select the particular layer that you want. Let's choose layer one from program 35. Now press import. The screen shows you that layer three was imported and returns you to the previous screen you were on. Now use the more buttons, select the layer page once again. We're going to program things so that you can use the sustain pedal to switch between this new layer and the other two layers. First, we will set each layer so that it will not sustain when it gets the sustain pedal controller. Scroll to the parameter that says sus pedal and turn it off for each layer. Next, scroll over to the parameter that says enable and set it to sustain for each layer. Just like with the mod wheel, you can do this quickly by holding enter and stepping on the sustain pedal. Finally, scroll down one parameter where it simply says S. This stands for sensitivity. Set layers one and two to reverse and leave layer three on normal. The sensitivity parameter works in conjunction with the two numbered values you see immediately to the right. These are the minimum and maximum values for the selected controller. Notice they are set to 64 and 127. These would constitute the on values for any switch controller. The off values would be 0 through 63. So now when the sustain pedal is turned on by stepping on it, you will hear layer 3. And when the pedal is off, you will hear layers 1 and 2. First, I'll unmute the first two layers. Now you can name and save your program using the methods that we covered previously. So let's say I was editing my rock band program, maybe changing the sine wave here or some particular edit, and a note becomes hung up like this. I now would be forced on most synthesizers to exit and save whatever changes I've made and get out of my editing. On our instrument, a simple press of the two buttons under the more and pitch will send the all notes off command and silence a stuck note. We'll also reset controllers. Let's say all of a sudden now my pedal isn't sending sostenuto and it should be. By pressing the buttons under key mapper layer, actually it's just the middle two buttons here, I can then enter a diagnostic page where maybe I want to look at MIDI. And now I can see, for example, that I am transmitting correctly. My pedal is sending, or maybe my keyboard is sending note on, note offs correctly. I can then exit out of this screen and still be in my editing dialog. That's all we have time to cover in our programming tutorial. There are many other parameters that you can explore. We recommend that you study some of your favorite preset programs to see many different examples of how to use VAST creatively.
Once you start creating your own programs and samples, you're going to want to save them to disk. Let's take a moment and talk about memory. There are two kinds of RAM memory in the 2500, sample RAM and PRAM. Sample RAM is used only for actual sample data, whether it is samples you make yourself or load from disk. If you have the sampling version of the 2500, your unit comes with sample RAM. If you have the basic unit, you have no sample RAM. Either way, you can expand your unit up to 128 meg using SIMS. This type of memory is volatile. That is, when you turn the unit off, the samples will be lost, making it necessary to save them to disk before turning the unit off. The other type of RAM, PRAM, is used to hold all objects except for the actual samples. This type of RAM is battery backed. However, it is, is always a good idea to back up your data by saving it to disk anyway. Press the disk mode button. The current disk parameter is highlighted. If you have not changed this from the factory default, it will be set at floppy. You can use this parameter to select either the floppy drive or a SCSI drive. Each device in a SCSI chain needs to have its own separate ID. There are eight possible IDs numbered between 0 and 7. The default number for the 2500 is 6. If you're planning on hooking up your 2500 up to a SCSI drive, we recommend that you read the SCSI information at the beginning of the disk mode chapter in your manual. SCSI has several rules that need to be followed, or you can end up with corrupt data. For now, we'll be working with a floppy drive, so set the current drive to floppy. Take a double density or high density disk and put it in the drive. Make sure the Write Protect tab is in the down position. The K2000 uses a DOS format for its floppy disks. If you have a disk pre-formatted for, do for DOS, you can save it without formatting. Otherwise, you must format the disk. Press one of the More buttons till you see Format and press it. Answer Yes and you'll be asked whether to format it for a 720K or a 1.4 meg. Double density disks are 720K and high density disks are 1.4 meg. You should always format the disk for the appropriate size. If you try and format a double density disk for 1.4 meg, it will fail the formatting process. Press yes in the next couple of screens and the formatting process begins. For those of you working with a SCSI drive, the process is basically the same. However, you will not be given the choice of size to format the drive. The 2500 will format it for the appropriate size. There are a couple of things to know about formatting SCSI. If you are using an optical drive, make sure to use a cartridge that is formatted for 512 bytes per sector instead of 1024 bytes per sector. The second thing is that the 2500 does not format SCSI devices in fully implemented DOS as it does with floppy disks. However, the 2500 can read and write to DOS formatted SCSI drives. So th those of you with a PC may want to format the drive from the PC. Then you can hook up the drive to either the PC or the 2500. If you format in DOS from the PC, make sure not to format with partitions because the 2500 can only see the first partition. For those of you with a Mac, if you have a program called Access PC, the Mac will recognize removable media drives more formatted on the 2500. Next, we'll talk about directories. You can group files on disk together within a directory, also known as a folder to Macintosh users. Grouping files by directory is extremely useful for organizing your sounds and songs, especially if you have a large hard drive. You can even put directories within other directories, just like on a computer. This is known as hierarchical file system. <laughs> Press the Write More button and select New Directory. You are then asked to name the directory. 
The name can be up to eight characters and follows DOS naming standards. This screen looks similar to the naming screen for objects, but two of the soft buttons are different. The two arrow buttons are replaced. You can still move by the cursor by using the left and right arrow buttons to the right of the display. The arrow end button moves the cursor to the last character. The choose button will display a list of names of files already on the disk. This can be useful if you're naming a series of directories with similar names. You can pull the name off the disk without having to retype it and then modify it. Since this is your first directory, you won't see any names to choose from on your new disk. So hit cancel. We'll name our directory sounds. Next, the 2500 will ask you if you want to use the current directory for the file. Since this is our first directory, just press OK. The 2500 creates a directory and returns you to disk mode. Now we're ready to save a file. For all disk operations, there are two methods you can use. One is the bank method and the other is the object method. The object method will allow you to save and load individual objects. We'll start with the bank method since it's simpler. Press the right more button and select save. Notice that there are different banks of 100. If you scroll down, you'll also see everything, which saves everything in RAM. And master, which saves all the global and MIDI parameters. When you choose a bank to save, it will save all types of objects in that bank. An asterisk after the bank indicates that there are objects in that bank. Let's look at the soft buttons on this page. Pressing export gives you the opportunity to save a file in other formats besides the Kurzweil format. AIFF and WAVE are two different sample formats. MIDI stands for a Type 0 standard MIDI file, which is a standard format for sequences. Once you have selected your format, the K2000 will display any objects that would apply to that format. Since we have neither samples nor songs in memory at this point, the display shows nothing. Press cancel, then save again. The object soft button allows you to use the object method of saving. We'll talk about that in a moment. The new directory soft button performs the same feature found on the disk mode page. It is also placed here so you can create a new directory to save a file without having to exit the save page. We'll save the 200's bank, since that is where we save the program that we created. Once 200 through 299 is highlighted, press OK. Once again, we see the naming page. We'll name our file Music and press OK to save it. Next, the 2500 asks which directory we wish to save in and shows the current directory. In this case, it is the root directory, which is the top level of the disk hierarchy. This is indicated by the backslash with no other directory names. We want to save the file in our sounds directory, so press change. The top line of the display shows that we are in the root directory. The display shows all directories and files found within the current level. In this case, there is only one directory. The three soft buttons on the left side will help you navigate through the different directories. Since you can have directories placed within other directories, these buttons allow you to move up and down through the hierarchy. The root button takes you immediately to the top level. The parent button moves you back up one level, and the open button shows you the directories within the current directory. Pressing current will save the file to the current root level directory. If you want to save the file within the sounds directory, press the set directory button. The file is then saved. Now let's load a file into the K2500. 
For this example, we'll load a file from one of the disks that came with your 2500. This disk is marked Extra Programs and Demos. Put the disk in the drive and press Load. The 2500 looks at the disk and will display all the files and directories in the root level directory. You will want to take some time exploring the files on this disk. There is a directory full of demo sequence files. There is also a directory called the farm. In this directory you will find over a thousand programs organized into follows by pr program type. It's an incredible collection of sounds and it truly shows off the diverse capabilities of the 2500. Scroll down till you see the file marked Video. This time we'll use the object method to load individual objects. Press Open. The 2500 reads the file and will display all the objects in the file. You can select individual objects to load. Simply scroll till that object is highlighted and press Select. An asterisk will appear next to the name, indicating that it, it has been selected. You can scroll through all the objects and select as many as you want this way. Once you, you have selected objects, you may want to double check the items you have selected. Pressing the Next Soft button will jump you to the next selected item in the list. If you have different types of objects in the file, pressing the Type Soft button will jump you to the first object for each type in the list. Another way to select objects is by using the Multi Soft button. Pressing this button gives you a new screen which will allow you to select objects by various criteria. If the Select parameter is set to Type Range, you can select various types of objects within a selected range of IDs. For example, you could choose to load only programs with IDs between, between 200 and 250. The All, Type, Toggle, and Clear soft buttons will help you in quickly selecting or deselecting groups of objects. There are also other settings for the select parameter. Check your manual for a detailed description of these features. Once you have chosen the objects you wish to be selected, press the Set Soft button. You will be returned to the Object Load page, and you will see that the objects you chose now have an asterisk indicating that they have been selected. Now press OK, and then Yes. You will then be asked which bank you want to load the objects into. Let's pick the 200's bank. Next, a group of soft buttons appears which allows you to pick the method the 2500 will use to load the objects. If you started with an empty bank, you will see only append and fill. Since we started with a bank that already contained objects, we also will see overfill, overwrite, and merge. Each of these methods will load in the objects to different locations, depending on what is in the file and what is already in that bank. For a complete description of the differences between the various choices, consult your manual. For now, we'll choose Append. The 2500 loads the objects and returns to disk mode. If you go to program mode and scroll through the bank, you will see the objects that you chose. Disk mode also gives other tools for manipulating files and directories. You can delete or rename them. You can move them from within one directory to another. You can also copy individual files or backup directories from one disk to another. These features work in much the same manner as loading and saving, so you can consult the manual if you have any questions on them. You will also find a soft button marked Utilities. 
In this window, you can check the amount of free space on your current disk, list the files in various directories, or find a file or directory by using a search string. The last thing we'll cover in disk mode is the macro feature. A macro is a set of instructions that will allow the K2500 to automatically load different files and individual objects from those files from a variety of disks. For example, if you have a CD-ROM full of samples, you could create your own programs using some of those samples and save the programs to a floppy disk. Then create a macro which will load the samples you want from the CD-ROM and the programs from the floppy. When you load the macro, the K2500 automatically will do the rest. Another thing you can do is create a boot macro, which will automatically load the files you want each time you turn the 2500 on. To create a macro, press the macro soft button. The 2500 has a macro table object in memory that will record all the files you load into the 2500. There is only one table in memory at a time. When you first enter the macro page, the macro recorder is turned off. Press the on soft button to turn the macro recording on. The 2500 returns to the disk mode page. Notice that the display shows that macro recording is on. Now you can go to the load page and load a file or group of files. The 2500 records everything you do. You can select individual objects from a file or load the entire file. We'll load the file video2. After pressing OK, you will see the load dialog. But there are two new soft buttons. If you press OK, the 2500 will load in the selected file and add the entry to the macro table. If you don't want to actually load the file, but you want to add the entry to the macro table, press Macro. Normally, macro entries are added to the end of your current macro table. The Insert Soft button allows you to place the entry in a different spot. For now, we'll choose the 500 banks and press Macro. Then we will choose our loading method. We'll pick append. Now we'll add one more entry to our table. Load in file video 3 to the 600s bank. Now we're ready to save our macro. Press Save and then Macro. You'll see a list of all the entries in the macro table. Each entry shows where the file is being loaded from, in this case the floppy. It also shows the directory path for the file and the bank it will be loaded to, along with the loading method, in this case append. Before you save, you need to select which entries you want. You can highlight specific entries and press select to only select certain entries. Since we want both entries, we will just press all. Next, we'll name our macro test and save it. Now when we go back to load, we'll see a file called testmac. Notice that the file suffix is mac instead of the typical krz. Select that file. The display asks if you want to load the macro as specified. If you press OK, it will load the files into the banks we previously designated. You can also choose to override the bank and loading mode settings by choosing a different bank. We'll load as specified by pressing OK. The macro now goes through the loading process for the files. 
If you want to create a macro that will automatically load when you power on, you should save with your macro with the name boot. Then you set the startup parameter on the disk page to the SCSI ID that your boot Mac file will be found. You can also select the floppy drive. As soon as you turn on the 2500, it will search for that file on the designated ID. If it can't find it, it will inform you. You can go on from there. There are many more features of working with macros, and we suggest that you consult your manual for more on this area. Within the K2500 song mode, you'll find a full featured sequencer. For those of you who have never used a sequencer, it functions much like a tape recorder does. But instead of recording sound, it records events. When you play back the sequence, the 2500 recreates those events and the instrument is played just as if you were playing notes yourself in real time. Of course, since this information has been recorded digitally, you can go back and edit individual events to change your performance or fix mistakes. If you have the rack, you'll probably want to use the local keyboard channel parameter. As I mentioned before, this parameter will re-channelize incoming information. By setting the local keyboard channel to 1, I can leave my keyboard transmitting on channel 1. Then as I go to record on each track, I can change tracks without having to change the transmit channel on the keyboard. When you first go to song mode, you'll be on song number 1, New Song. If you're not on that song, change to it. Let's look at the main song page. Along the bottom, you'll see a row of 16 tracks, along with MIDI channels assigned to those tracks. We've logically assigned track 1 to MIDI channel 1, track 2 to channel 2, etc. However, you can assign any MIDI channel you want to any track. You can even have more than one track assigned to the same channel. But keep in mind that you can only have one program on a channel at a time. So in that case, both tracks would be playing the same program. To record our first track, we'll set the record track to 1 and call up a bass program. We'll set the tempo to 100. Then we'll go to the miscellaneous page and set the record mode to linear and the play mode to loop. There are different ways of recording your data, and we'll be exploring the various record modes. Linear recording is just like recording to tape. We can record as long as we want until the memory runs out. Check that the count off is set to 1, and the click is set to record. This will give us a one bar count off before recording starts, and we'll hear the click when recording, but not when playing back. Now press main to get back to the main page. In the upper right-hand corner, the 2500 displays the song status, which is stopped right now. Press the record button. Notice the display flashes record ready. When you hit play, the 2500 will count off four beats since we designated a one-bar count off, and then begin recording. <laughs> When you're done, the 2500 asks if you want to save. You can name your song here as well. We'll go ahead and save it. Now I'm going to make some changes to the track I recorded. First, I'm going to quantize it. Quantization is a tool which allows you to move your notes forward and backwards in time so that they line up with a grid. With this technique, if you've played in something and the rhythm isn't very accurate, you can go back and make it accurate. Press Edit to go into the song editor. There are sev several different types of editors. When you first enter the editor, you're on the common page. This contains parameters such as tempo and time signature, which affects all tracks. Now press Track. This brings you into the Track Editor. 
In this editor, there are a variety of functions which can be applied to a specific track for a given range of measures. The upper right-hand corner shows you which track you're currently recording. You can change tracks with the channel bank buttons. With function highlighted, scroll to quantize. Notice the boxed area on the right. This is called the region criteria window. You will find this for all track editing functions. It is where you set the range of measure that you want to edit, along with other criteria such as selecting notes in a certain range, or only certain controllers. Since we have just entered the editor, it is set to edit from the beginning of the song till our current endpoint, and to edit the entire range of notes. We'll leave these parameters set at their defaults. On the left side of the page, you see the parameters specific to quantization. The quantization parameter lets you choose how much quantization applies. At 100%, the notes will be moved all the way to the grid point. If you choose an amount less than 100%, the notes will be moved only part way, according to the percentage. Grid lets you define the note value that you want to use. I'm going to quantize to 16th notes. Type in 16. You can quantize to any possible note value. To jump quickly through the standard values, highlight the parameter and press the plus and minus buttons simultaneously. The swing and shift parameters allow you to further change the way notes are moved. 0% swing is straight time. 100% produces a triplet feel. Shift lets you move the notes forward or backward by a specific amount. Once you have the parameters set the way you want, press go. The 2500 carries out the edit. Now we can play the song to hear the change. <laughs> Press done to return to the common page. A lot of musicians and composers like to take loops from CD-ROM, especially for dance music. And uh, I can show you here uh, with the K2500 sequencer how to adjust the relative tempo of the sequence with the loop so that it matches up properly. So here I've loaded in this loop and I can go to song mode and place it into a sequence. You see that the tempo is at 120, which is probably not the proper tempo for the song uh, or for the loop, but if I just get the loop into the song and stop, it doesn't matter how long I hold it, go into the event editor of the song and see that my starting, my starting note is at 120. Um, I, I'm just going to bring that into the very first tick by pressing 001 and then enter. And now I've got my, the start of my loop at the very beginning of the song and I can stretch it out for the full length of one bar, which is going to be one bar loop. I can save this song. Now it's at tempo 120, which is not the proper tempo for this loop. As you'll hear, after one beat, it's not looping properly. So I can adjust with fractional tempos. Um, I go into the event editor and I see that there is no tempo indication here. To get a tempo marker into your song, you just press record and play, and then during the count off, just change the, uh, the, the tempo field one increment and then press stop. Save that, and now if I look in the event editor, I see that I have a tempo display. My guess is that the tempo of this loop is somewhere around 80. That, oh, that may be a little slow and uh, press play and see how this is looping now. Okay, I see that it's a little bit slow. There should be only one kick drum there. And I can bring up this tempo fractionally, maybe around 85. This is getting pretty close. And there I think we have it right about there. So, even though the tempo says 85, you can see that uh, in the event editor, it's actually set at 85.62. For our next track, we're going to record the drums. We'll be using the loop record method. Loop record works similarly to the way you create a pattern on a drum machine. 
You set a length for your loop, and then each time the 2500 goes through the loop, it adds what you are playing to the previously recorded info. The length of the loop is determined by the endpoint. Our endpoint is now set at the point where we press stop on our first track. We want to set our endpoint so that we can record an exact four bar loop. To set a new endpoint, press the event soft button. The event editor will list every single event in the track. You can scroll through the track and change individual things, such as note numbers, velocities, and durations. This is great for fixing wrong notes or other small mistakes. As you scroll, you'll hear each event. Notice that at the beginning of the track, you will find program and bank changes, along with initial volume and pan controller amounts. The 2500 creates these events when you first record the track. Scroll to the end of the track to change the endpoint. Since I'm making a four bar loop, I'll scroll over one parameter and type five, one, and then zero, zero, zero. Then of course I hit enter. Now press done, then exit. Since I've made changes to the track, the 2500 asks if I want to save the song. Press yes. I'll be saving back over my old song, so I'll choose replace. Now I'll record my drum track. Set the record track to two and call up a drum program. Go back to the miscellaneous page and set the record mode to the loop. I'm also going to set this track for input quantization. You can actually quantize during the recording process by setting the quantization parameters on this page instead of quantizing in the editor. Once again, I'll choose 16th note quantization and 100%. Now return to the main page. Make sure that the mode is set to merge. This way it will add what you record each time it runs through your loop. If mode is set to erase, then each time you record in the loop, it will replace what was there previously. If you make a mistake while recording in loop mode, you can erase an individual note by holding the enter button and striking the note that you want erased during the point in time you want to erase the note. I think what I'll do is erase that. So what we're going to do is hold down the enter button and press that key of the crash simple. So now it'll be gone. Next I'll add the bass drum and the snare to the same track. You'll notice it's quantized as I play it in. Good. Now we hit stop, then it'll ask you if you want to save the song, hit yes, and we can replace. Now I'll record a comping part for track three. For this part, I don't want to use input quantization, so I'll go back and set that to zero percent. Then I'll go in advance to record on track three and pick a sound. Now we're ready to record. Fine. We'll stop.
stop, I'll save it, and replace. Now we'll show another example of track editing. Go back into the track editor and scroll to change. Press track. This allows you to modify or scale note velocities or the values of a specific controller. We'll scale the velocities on track three to 80%. You can use the offset parameter to add or subtract a specific amount. On constant, the mode parameter will affect all the notes in the range equally. You can set it to a positive or negative ramp so that the change occurs gradually from the start point to the end point of your defined range. For example, you could scale back the velocities over a four bar phrase using a negative ramp to create a decrescendo. I'll leave it on constant. And we'll save. Next, we'll record one more track. Go to track four, and I'll pick a sound. And then we can start playing. <laughs> Now I can save this and then replace. I'm going to show you how to do a program change for the top of a song. Uh, here I have a drum program on channel one. When I press play, uh, I, I hear the particular drum set. And if I change, uh, with the program field highlighted, I can change different drum kits and choose a kit that I like the best. I like this particular kit. When I press stop, um, the this, this song uh, updates its program parameter, its volume, pan, and tempo settings. Um, if I want to put the program change in, all I do is press record, uh, select the drum set I want here with the alpha wheel, and press stop. And uh, my program change is now in the song. And as I said, this will also work the same for volume, pan, and tempo. I'm going to show one more example of the track editor. Let's call up the erase function. Set the events to mono pressure. If your keyboard has mono pressure and was set to transmit it, you may have recorded a lot of pressure events into your sequence. If the sounds that you're playing do not utilize pressure, then these events waste a lot of memory. So we're going to get rid of them. Instead of erasing the pressure from just one track, we want to do this to all the tracks. By pressing both the channel bank buttons together, it switches to all tracks. Now I'm going to call up a version of this song I already completed with additional tracks. We're going to look at the mix page. As you can see, this page resembles the layout of a mixing board. You can set initial levels for each track or record changes in real time. You can play the song and change the levels and pan position for various tracks. In addition, you can mute individual tracks using the eight mode buttons. You can access all 16 tracks by switching from 1 through 8 or 9 through 16. The muting is temporary and is in effect only while on the mix page. Let's do some of that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Once you have the settings you desire, you can press keep to update the initial volume and pan settings found at the beginning of the track. If you want to record changes in real time, then you would record while on the mix page and make your changes. You'll need to start with new song in order to create your own arrangement. And now we'll press edit and then arrange. On this page, you can take various songs and string them together to form an arrangement. This is extremely useful for saving memory. The 2500 has a limitation of 64K for any object except a sample. If you have a long and complex song, you can break it down into sections and save each section as a separate song. Then, you can use the Arrange Editor to put the sections together. If you have a section that repeats, you don't need to save it twice. You can have the Arrange Editor play it twice. Let's look at the parameters on this page. Each part of the arrangement is called a step. For each step, you can assign a song. I have song number 202 assigned to step 1. As I scroll through the different steps, you can see that I've assigned a different song for each step. To add new steps, you press the Add button. You can delete a step with the Delete button. For each step, you can choose to mute individual tracks. In this way, you could assign the same song to two steps, but mute different tracks in each step. Then, when you play the arrangement, you will hear two different sections, even though they are using the same song. You can also transpose it a step and have it repeat any number of times. One great feature is that you can trigger steps from various keys and then play along with them. You can spread your different sequences across the keyboard and trigger them in any order you want to create arrangements in real time. As you can see, I have assigned the first song to C2 to G2. The second song is assigned to C3 to G3. And then I have the last song, song number th step number three, assigned to C4 to G4. Since the songs are assigned to a group of keys, as I play up and down the keyboard, the entire sequence will be transposed. However, I don't want the drums to transpose because the drums would trigger different keys that would lead to different sounds. To prevent this from happening, you tell the 2500 that a specific track is a drum track so that it will not respond to transposition. You set this parameter on the common page in the editor. So if I go to song 202 and look in the editor, you will see the track 3 is set as the drum track. There it is, D on the drum track. Now I'll go back to my arrangement song. Okay. You need to designate a channel to be used for triggering the different steps. Press edit and set the trigger channel to 16. That's right here. Now we'll go back to the main page. Set the record track to 16. I'll call up a lead sound to jam on. The keys that are assigned to trigger the steps will not play the lead sound, but the other keys will, providing you're using the local keyboard channel parameter. I want to have both hands free for playing the lead. To do this, I'll go to the Arrange Editor and set Latch On. Highlight any parameter except Program and hit Edit. If Program is highlighted, you will go to the Program Editor when you press Edit. Now with Latch set to On, when you strike a key, it will play entirely through the song assigned to that key, even if I let go of the key. With latch off, the song stops the moment that I release the key.
2500 comes with a built-in effects processor. In addition to this basic effects processor, there's an option called the KDFX, which adds a great deal more flexibility in terms of both effects programming and routing. For this video, however, we'll only be talking about the basic effects processor. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, the standard effects only come out of the mix outs. So make sure you have cables plugged into mix and not to the A separate outs if you want to work with the standard effects. Press the effects mode button. The first two parameters on this page are self-explanatory. You can select the effect you want and set the wet, dry mix. But the other two parameters, effects mode and effects channel, are important to understand because they determine how the effects processor is controlled. The effects here function as a single effect processor. You can combine different effects together, but they can't be split up between programs or channels. In other words, whichever effect you pick is going to affect all of the programs. You can't have reverb for one program and delay on another. So you use the effects mode parameter to choose what will control the effects processor. The default value is auto. This means that whichever mode you are currently in is controlling the effects. Each program and setup has an effect assigned to it. So if you go to program mode and call up a program, the effect assigned to that program on the effects page in the program editor will be called up. For example, if we go to program mode, call up piano, and then go back to the effects mode. You will see the effect is small hall. If you go back to the program mode, call up clav, and then go back to the effects. And you'll see that the effect is now stereo flanger. The same would apply for setups. The effects mode parameter works in conjunction with the effects channel. The default value for this is current. This means that the program assigned to the MIDI channel is currently in the display and in control of the effects. But you can also set this to a specific channel. For example, you could set it so that the program on channel one is in control of the effects. As we mentioned, in auto, either a program or a setup can be in control, depending on which mode you're in. You can also set this parameter to setup or program only. The final value is master. When set to master, the effect that you call up on this page will be the one you hear, no matter what program you call up. In this situation, the effects channel becomes the channel you would use to send program changes on to call up effects. You can also use this channel to send controllers to alter parameters in real time. If you're using the K2500 sequencer, there are a couple of options you can take. If you set effects mode to master, you can choose your effect on the effects page and it will remain at that setting. If you put it in auto, then you will have to use the effect channel parameter, which is found on the edit common page of the song. In this case, whichever program is on the effect channel will be controlling the effects. Another thing you may wish to do is have a different amount of wet-dry mix per MIDI channel. Due to the way this basic effects processor works with the 2500, there is no simple way to do this. However, it is possible to do this by use of some vast programming. In order to accomplish this, you must choose an algorithm that has two outputs from the final stage. An example of this is algorithm 2, which uses a Panner DSP. Here's how you do it. Notice that this algorithm takes one signal and splits it into two, an upper wire and a lower wire. Once you have chosen the algorithm, scroll and select the output page you will notice that there are two values for each parameter. To the left, you see U and L. This stands for the upper wire and the lower wire on the algorithm. Set the upper pair for A and the lower pair for B. Next, scroll and select the F3 position page. This control page determines how much of the signal is sent to the upper wire and how much to the lower wire. If you set the adjust parameter to 100%, it will be fully on the upper wire and routed to A. If you set it 
to negative 100, it will be fully on the lower wire and routed to B. And of course, any value in between will mix the two wires appropriately. You can even program a control source so you could change it in real time if you want it. Although this method works perfectly for controlling the amount of wet-dry mix per program, the limitation is that you can only use algorithms which have two output wires, so you may not be able to use it if the sound of your program depends on a different algorithm, which does not have the two wires. The 2500 comes with quite a few preset effect programs, but you can also create your own. There are two ways to enter the effects editor. You can go to the effects mode and press edit, or you can get there from within the program editor. Since we're already in the program editor, we'll use this method. Scroll and select the effects page. With the effect parameter highlighted, press edit. The effect processor contains 27 different effect configurations. These configurations include reverb, delay, chorus, EQ, and mixtures of various effects. To select the different configurations, you can use the channel bank buttons. As you change configurations, the various parameters available for editing will change. Once you have found the configuration you want, you can scroll through the various parameters and set them for your specifications. When you're finished, you can name and save the effect in the same manner as saving a program. Press exit and you jump back to the program editor. Notice that there are two other parameters below wet dry mix. You can choose two aspects of the effect which you can control in real time. These will change depending on the type of effect you have, con you have chosen. The adjust parameter lets you set an initial value. You can assign any control source and set the depth to determine how much change you want, just like we did with wet dry mix in the programming tutorial. This method works as long as effects mode is set to auto or program. If you have the effects mode set to master, then specific controller numbers are hardwired to specific parameters. Consult your reference manual for a list of these controller numbers. In MIDI mode, you'll find all parameters that control how the 2500 sends and receives information. There are three pages in MIDI mode, transmit, receive, and channels. When you first enter MIDI mode, you'll be on the transmit page. If you have the rack, you probably not need to work with the parameters on this page. There are a few things worth mentioning, however. If you're using the local keyboard channel parameter that we described at the beginning of this video, the K2500 will actually send incoming MIDI information out the MIDI out port. You can then use the controller parameters in the right column of the screen to remap one type of MIDI controller to another. Consult your manual for more on this. If you turn the buttons parameter on, the 2500 will send out a SysX, SysX message for each button you press. If you record these messages into an external sequencer, you can play back the sequence to remote control various changes, such as disk loading or changing other parameters. Press the Receive button. Here you'll find parameters that control how the 2500 responds to incoming MIDI data. You would normally want to leave the MIDI mode set to Multi, so that the 2500 will respond multi timbrely If you have problems with the 2500 not responding to sustain pedal commands from your controller, try setting the All Notes Off parameter to Ignore. Otherwise, just leave it on Normal. The program change type parameter lets you select the method the 2500 uses to respond to program and bank changes. The default is extended. If you load in the general MIDI disk that came with your instrument, this will change to QA 0 through 127. This sets the 2500 so that it will only call up the 128 general MIDI programs you loaded in. If you then want to be able to access all of the other programs, you will need to set it back to extend it. 
You can also load the reset master file on the disk, which will change back this parameter along with the other master parameters that were changed when you loaded the GM disk. For an explanation on the different program change types, consult your manual. You will notice that the velocity and pressure map parameters are found on the MIDI receive and transmit pages, as well as on the master page. Each page is used for a different aspect of control. If you have the rack, you will want to use the parameters in the receive page. This will control how the 2500 responds to incoming velocity and pressure messages. If you have the keyboard, you will want to use the parameters on the master page. This will control how the 2500 responds to its own keyboard. Finally, you can use the parameters on the transmit page to scale the velocity and pressure being sent out of the MIDI output, especially useful if you have a slave synth that is sensitive to higher velocities. Velocity and pressure maps work by assigning musical dynamics to specific velocities and scaling them between each setting. There are seven different velocity maps and seven different pressure maps included in the 2500, but you can also make your own. To create a velocity map, highlight the parameter and press edit. You will see a graph showing the map. Along the top, you will see parameters representing eight different dynamic amounts. The numbers indicate actual velocities that are tied to that dynamic. You can scroll to each parameter and change its value. Once you have something you like, you can name it and save that map. Pressure maps work the same, even though they may be used to control things other than amplitude. Although it isn't related to MIDI, the receive page is also where you will find the SCSI ID for the 2500. The default SCSI ID for the 2500 is number 6, but it can be changed to any number between 0 and 7. Just make sure it is different from the IDs of other SCSI devices in your chain. For descriptions of the rest of the parameters on this page, consult your manual. The channels page contains parameters that can be set for each specific channel. The display only shows one channel at a time. To view the various channels, use the channel bank buttons. The enable parameter allows you to turn a channel on or off. Once off, it will not respond to any MIDI data. You can call up a program and set volume and pan levels for each channel. These levels will change if you send subsequent MIDI pan or volume messages. If you want to keep the program pan and volume settings as they are, turn the lock parameters on. They prevent the 2500 from responding to program change pan or volume information for that particular channel. The last two parameters are output pair and output gain. The default settings for these parameters is program, which means that the settings found on the output page in the program editor will be followed. However, you can override this so that no matter what program is on the channel, it will have a specific setting. For example, you can change the output pair parameter on channel 1 so that any program called up on channel 1 will be assigned to the B outputs. The program change soft button allows you to send out a program change on any channel without affecting the programs assigned to the various channels within the 2500. The reset channel soft button gives you a quick way to set all 16 channels back to their default parameters. Master mode contains global parameters which affect the entire instrument as well as some useful utilities. Global tuning and transposing are available and you can adjust the contrast of the display. There are also parameters for setting the outputs to be stereo or mono. This is also where you set the drum channel. As we mentioned before, the drum channels are 1 through 8 or 1 through 7, plus the channel you designate here. 
The intonation parameter allows you to choose between various tuning tables. The default is equal tempered tuning, but the 2500 comes with 16 other tuning tables you may want to experiment with. You can also create your own tuning tables. To do this, highlight the intonation parameter. We'll select number two, Classic Just, and press Edit. You will see a display that is laid out like a keyboard with 12 values, one for each note in the octave. Tuning tables are octave-based. That means that an octave will still be tuned as a normal octave, but within the octave, the various intervals can be tuned plus or minus in one cent increments. For example, in this table, a half step is 29 cents flat, and a whole step is 4 cents sharp from being an equal-tempered tuning. Once you, you have made changes, you can name and save the intonation table in the same manner as other objects. Even though the diagram represents a keyboard going from C to B, you can have any note of the scale act as the root that the various intervals are tuned from. Exiting back to the master page, notice the parameter called intonation key. This will be the root key. You can change this in real time by sending MIDI note numbers 0 through 11. Now let's look at the soft buttons. The sample button takes you into the sampler. Covering sampling is beyond the scope of this video. Please consult the chapter in the manual on sampling. The utility button gives you a screen with four choices. The MIDI soft button stands for MIDI scope. This is a very useful tool for diagnosing MIDI problems. When you press it, the screen goes blank, except for the Done button. Now the 2500 will display every MIDI message it receives. It shows you the type of message being sent along with the channel it was sent on, and the values for the message. Press Done to return to the utilities. Consult your manual for descriptions of the other utilities. Press Done again to return to the master page. The Delete Soft button calls up a bank dialog similar to the one you see when saving or loading. This allows you to delete whole banks of RAM objects or even everything in RAM. But if you would like to delete individual objects, press the Objects Soft button. This brings up a database management tool which allows you to access the various objects in internal memory. You can move objects from one location to another, make copies, rename, delete, or dump via SysX. As an example, we'll select Move. You now see a screen that is identical to the screen you saw in disk mode for selecting individual objects for saving and loading. You can select individual objects and move them to a different bank. We have designed the 2500 so that as your needs grow, the 2500 can grow with you. If you have the 2500 without sampling, the sampling option can be added at a later point. In addition, the following options are available. In addition to the 2500R's 8 megabyte of internal sounds, there are three optional ROM sound blocks which can be added to internal memory. So they're always available with no disks to load. The new 4 megabyte stereo grand piano sound block offers full bandwidth and the most realistic stereo piano sound Kurzweil has ever produced. Contemporary and orchestral ROM sound blocks engineered for the 2500R each add an, an incredible 8 megabyte of new sounds to your instrument. Orchestral ROM contains superb orchestral samples plus layers and splits, combinations and synth programs based on the orchestral samples. Contemporary ROM contains a collection of Kurzweil's hottest contemporary music sounds, from distorted lead guitar to ethnic percussion. 
The Kurzweil Digital Effects option introduces Kurzweil's new digital signal processing chip, a next generation effects processor that's second to none. With four stereo buses, full bandwidth, plenty of DSP power, and the most flexible routing scheme on the market, KDFX can replace the separate effect processors you used in Mixdown. You can route any signals from guitars, keyboards, vocals, mixers, etc. into the K2500RS sampling inputs and process them either in real time or with precise automation via MIDI. The rack mount digital multi-track interface provides a way of sending the 2500's eight digital output streams directly to an Alesis ADAT, Tascam DA88, or other compatible units, and simultaneously to four stereo AES EBU outputs. The DMT can also take the eight channel digital outputs from a digital multi-track and send them to the four AES EBU outputs. With asynchronous sample rate converters, the 2500's output can effectively sync to any external sample clock. Two AES EBU inputs allow the DMT to be used as a standalone sample rate converter. Two DMTs can be used to convert DA88 to an ADAT format and vice versa. A single stereo pair goes back to the 2500 to allow digital transfer from a digital multitrack. You may choose to upgrade the 2500's program and sample memories. Battery-backed program RAM can be expanded from 240K to 1256K via standard SIPs. Sample memory expands to a powerful 128 megabyte for storing over 24 minutes of CD quality sampled sound via standard SIMs. Finally, we have made it easier for you to upgrade the operating system when we, we release new versions. With Flash ROM, you can upgrade your operating system from floppy disk or SCSI. New software will be available via an online services or from your Kurzweil dealer. You can also write your own setups and programs to Flash ROM. We hope that this video tutorial has been helpful. Take some time to explore the concepts we've covered here, and you'll have many enjoyable hours with your instrument. My name is Jordan Rudis. Enjoy your new K2500. Thank you.